Hello everyone. In this video, uh, we will work on section 3.3. .3. It's about linear systems of ODEs. In section 3.1, I define what I mean by, what we mean by linear system, uh, systems of ODEs, right? Systems of ODEs basically is, uh, there are more than one uh, differential equation, okay? And in section 3.2, I introduce I introduced matrices and other cool concepts from linear algebra uh, that are useful to re re rewrite a system of linear equations uh, in that section actually in a, using matrices. And now in this section we are going to work on uh, how to rewrite systems of all these using matrices. Okay, so matrices will be again quite useful in this setting. All right. Okay. So first of all. Uh, a vector, okay, what is a vector from 3.2 again? A vector is just one column of a matrix. Uh, but when I say vector valued function, uh, then I mean uh, the, uh, a vector that whose entries are not only a number, but also can, can be a function depending on a variable, okay? So these, uh, and uh, those vector valued functions are uh, written this way, okay? So this is just a column, but each entry is a function with respect to a variable, for example, t. Uh, let me give you an example. x arrow of t equals 2t e to the t, okay? So this is a vector valued function. So the entries of the vectors uh, are just not only numbers, but these are also a function with respect to t. And similarly, we define a matrix valued function, a matrix valued function uh, as a matrix, uh, actually it, a vector valued function is a matrix whose entries are again, uh, as it happens in the vector valued function case, who uh, the entries are uh, not only numbers, but also functions with respect to t, okay? For example, this way. So, uh, let me give you an example. A of t equals e to the t zero sine t t squared. This is a vector, a matrix valued function. Okay. As you see here, we have zero here. That's fine. We can have numbers uh, in the uh, entries of a matrix valued function because number is also a uh, function, right? It's a constant function. And whenever we have a matrix valued function, we can talk about its derivative, okay? And this derivative will be just the derivative of each entry independently, okay? So let's, for example, uh, take the derivative of the vector val matrix valued function in the previous example. So this derivative will be then, so I'm gonna take the derivative of each component separately. So the derivative of e to the t is e to the t, the derivative of zero is zero, the derivative of sine t is cosine t, and the derivative of t squared is two t, okay? All right, now uh, a first order linear system of all these can be written as the vector equation, okay? So we are going to use matrices and vectors to rewrite a first order linear system in this way. It is first order, that's why highest derivative is the first derivative. And uh, what, uh, what do we have here? These are the derivatives. These are the, this is actually P of T is a matrix valued function. And X of T and F of T are vector valued function. All right, and whenever we have such a system, we can also talk about the solution of that system. Uh, basically, the solutions are just vectors of x of t satisfying this uh, system of all these. All right, let's look at this example. Right, the following system of all these in the matrix form. So in this case, x arrow prime of t is equal to x one prime and x two prime. 
that prime is maybe can be closer x1 prime okay so what is p of t here look at the coefficients of one x1 and x2 and order matters be careful one two two one p of t f of t sorry maybe before that i can write x of t it is x1 and x2 and finally f of t is equal to 2e to the 4t and e to the 4t okay all right so with having that i can rewrite this system as this way right x is equal to p of t one two two one x of t plus two e to the four t e to the four t of course this is p of t and this is f of t all right yes i can as i said to you I, we can use matrices and vectors to write uh, to rewrite a system of all these and in the, in in such a setting in such setting here i can say if f of t part is the zero vector then we call that system as homogeneous system okay as it happened in the one equation case and remember in one equation case and homogeneous uh, first order hom uh, 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 for first order homogeneous equation uh, has a superposition right it's same thing also applies here first order homogeneous linear systems also have the superposition principle but what is superposition principle let me remind you and let me also explain in this setting let's assume that we have a homogeneous system of all these linear homogeneous system of all these and suppose that we have solution and solutions okay and whenever we have n different solutions if i take linear combination of them this way that will be also a solution as i said this is the exact the same situation with the one equation case furthermore if this system of n equation if this is a system of n equations so if we have n equations and we have n solutions and these solutions are linearly independent condition two then every solution can be written as a linear combination of these x1 and xn these solution vectors okay in other words in using maybe linear algebra terms i can say these solutions x1 x2 all the way through xn makes a basis for the solution set of this homogeneous of this linear homogeneous system of all these okay but what is linearly independent meaning i'm going to explain that in the next video so now for now let me stop here i will continue the section in the next video right okay see you in the next video